Edwin Dorsey is the author of the Bear Cave Newsletter, which is a weekly report that keeps investors informed of the latest events in the short selling world. Edwin researches everything from the newest activist short campaigns to releasing his own research on potentially fraudulent companies himself. His most recent work revolves around the sketchy accounting of private equity giant Vista Equity Partners, as well as some related party transactions of its CEO, Robert Smith. Today, Edwin is going to walk us through his process of finding potential short stories like Vista and the tools he uses to uncover these potentially fraudulent corporations. Edwin's research process is completely unorthodox from your mainstream financial research. He is one of the youngest and most original thinkers in the short selling space. We hope you enjoy this episode of Short Selling 101, How to Uncover Red Flags. I'm Edwin Dorsey. I write a newsletter called The Bear Cave. It's a newsletter to follow what's going on in the short world. Um, and every week I kind of, kind of chronicle new activist campaigns, interesting SEC enforcement actions, and anything I think that's suspicious going on at large public companies. One of my favorite ways to come up with ideas for potential short ideas is by looking at SEC comment letters these are letters the Office of Corporate Finance, Division of Corporate Finance, sends public companies to scrutinize their financials to an extra degree. And they're made public on the Edgar database with usually about a 30-day delay after an issue is resolved. There's thousands of these sent every year to public companies. And what I do is I go on Edgar and I'll just search through them chronologically. Most of them have no serious issues, but every once in a while you'll find a letter where the SEC is really applying a high level of scrutiny to a company and they might follow up two or three times with the company on an issue. For me, that's usually a good sign that this company might be worth looking into more. I'll also look at management turnover. If a company has a lot of resignations or has had like four different CFOs in the past five years, that's a sign you might want to look into something. Another thing I do is I often do screens for auditors to see um, what large public companies are using a, an auditor that's probably not fit to be auditing them. So if there's a $10 billion company that isn't using a big four auditor or a $2 billion company that's using an auditor that doesn't really audit any other large companies, that can be a sign something's worth looking into. Um, and the final way is just by talking to people and hearing if there's any companies that are doing wrong in the world or hurting consumers and maybe even looking for lawsuits against companies that are particularly salacious. So, so, so my favorite example of a company that I looked into is a company called Care.com. Care.com is the largest babysitting platform, was the largest babysitting platform in the U.S. And I first heard of them because my friend was a babysitter on the platform and had a really bad experience. And after that, I started looking into the company. First, I went on Pacer to check lawsuits against the company. And I noticed right away there were four or five lawsuits against this company called Care.com. Um, and the lawsuits were pretty bad. And they were alleging that Care.com wasn't vetting the babysitters, even though they claimed to be vetting the babysitters on the platform. Then, uh, to test the site's safety, I uh, tried to sign up as a fake babysitter using the name Harvey Weinstein and a photo of Harvey Weinstein. And to my surprise, the site approved me, um, even though they said they were vetting babysitters and they wouldn't allow anyone using a fake identity to get on. And that was a pretty big red flag. Uh, then I started digging through local news media reports of any time a Care.com babysitter had been involved in a bad incident. And it turned out there were a lot of times where Care.com claimed to be vetting someone, but then a parent would find out that their babysitter from the platform had like, you know, a DUI or a drug arrest, you know, just a few months prior. And somehow Care.com wasn't catching that. And then what I do when I'm more interested in a company is I file lots of FOIA requests and public record requests for consumer complaints. So Care.com was based in the state of Massachusetts. So then I filed a public records request to the Massachusetts Attorney General. 
for consumer complaints against Care.com. Two months later, after paying a small fee, maybe $5, I got a stack of 150 consumer complaints against the company. And it turned out that a lot of consumers had been raising safety issues about this company, and they'd also been raising issues of Care.com overbilling their credit cards or making it nearly impossible to cancel their service. That made me think maybe there's legal issues with the company, and I noticed that they'd been changing their legal matters section of their 10K and 10Q um, to disclose that their government investigations into their safety practices and billing had been increasing. And from there, it was just, you know, all out digging, a lot more FOIA requests, talking to competitors, reading about everything you could get your hand on, press release, every SEC document. Um, and ultimately, I came to the conclusion the company was inflating their um, user metrics, was not doing the safety checks they claimed to be doing, and was going to have a lot of legal issues down the road. And that's what kind of convinced me to blow the whistle a little and start publishing on them and recommending them as a stock to bet against. Most analysts are focused a lot on the numbers and the quarter-to-quarter -quarter movements of a company. I, and I think a lot of short sellers, uh, take a more journalistic approach. So, so you really want to understand the company um, and how it's interacting with consumers. I'm really interested in what are the consumer complaints against a company? What is this company doing wrong that the market might not be picking up? What are, what are regulators potentially interested in? Is this company under any undisclosed regulatory scrutiny? Because oftentimes through FOIA and public record requests, you can find that companies have had a lot of correspondence with the state attorney general or a state attorney general has been asking companies to refund consumers, even though a company might not be disclosing that in their 10K or 10Q. Um, is you're looking for what's going wrong, and for me, I'll, I'll file lots of FOIA and public record requests where most analysts probably aren't doing that. So I do something that I don't think enough people do, is I love this SEC tool called SEC Full Text Search, and they recently revamped it about a month or two ago. Basically, what, what, what this allows you to do is you can put in any person's name, you put it in quotes in the SEC full text search tool, and it'll show you every time that name's been mentioned in any SEC filing for the past 19 years. And to me, there's no better way to search for somebody's work history than that. So, so in most people, they might just Google a person, they might look on LinkedIn, but a person might leave off any bad work history from LinkedIn. Bloomberg might not be picking up their full work history to the full extent. When you do the full text search, you can see any time their name is mentioned. So you can see if they were a large shareholder in a penny stock, if they joined the board for just a month. It's very inclusive of everything. So, so when I'm looking at a company, I'll put every board member through the SEC full text search tool. I'll put all the current executives and any recent former executives through the full text search tool. And I'll just plot out in Excel all the former companies I've worked at. And in a best case scenario, if you're looking into a company, right now I'm looking at one where three of the board members have been involved in like penny stocks that have gone to zero. And this is a billion dollar company. So that's probably a sign that, that, that maybe the board isn't as high class as you think it is. Um, so that's how I like looking into management and executives using the SEC full text search tool. So the public record requests are the best. Uh, I think the second best secret is there's a tool called Who Is. Um, where you can see anybody who, who registered any website. So, so you can look up, if you're trying to figure out who owns a subsidiary or who owns a website, you just put the uh, address into whois.com and it'll show you who registered it. Oftentimes it's registered anonymously, but you can see um, who registered it, the email they use. And going along with that, there's also a tool called Reverse Who Is, where you can put in any email or the end of any email and see all the websites registered with that address. So the, the best way to use that, in my opinion, is you can, let's say if I wanted to look into Apple, I could put in at apple.com in a reverse who is search and I can see all the websites owned by Apple. 
Um, in this case, I don't know if it would be super helpful. Maybe Apple registers a website before they release a product. I know Kodak did that, so some smart people were able to see Kodak was launching a virtual currency before they publicly announced it because they found the website through a reverse who is search. So if you're looking into a smaller company, you might just do a, a reverse who is search by searching through for their corporate email address in any new website registrations and you might see that they actually own the website of a customer or they ha they're registering websites of entities that you thought were independent or sometimes you'll even find a company is registering like websites related to litigation so if a company in, uh, has a product xyz they might register xyz lawsuits xyz fraud to kind of get ahead of class action litigation and like kind of register domains that a lawyer might use to sue them. And that, that, that might be a sign that something's going up. So uh, public record requests are the best. I think reverse who is, a, a few people know about it, but uh, I, that's a good tool too. The Freedom of Information Act allows individuals to request public government records. Your average hedge fund analyst goes to the Federal Trade Commission to understand the formal complaints against potential companies. Edwin found a niche in going to the state level of government where he files public record requests to the state attorney generals, whose turnaround time is way faster than the federal level. Oftentimes you can read primary letters and understand whether a company is paying repeated fines and restitution. This is one of the easiest ways to see if a company is cutting corners or potentially doing something nefarious. For idea generation, Edwin uses Twitter and reads other investor research as a major tool to cast a wide net. From there, Edwin siphons out those ideas by checking management turnover, which is a major red flag that the company is in a precarious position. The process snowballs when the auditor is rather obscure and unknown. These are just one set of tools an investor can leverage in their process of short selling, but finding new ideas to short is one of the hardest tasks in a pool of thousands of stocks. We hope you enjoy this production of Short Selling 101. Thank you and see you next time.